Howdy booktube, Nikki here with a pretty sizable haul. Oops, I think there are over 50 books, but I haven't really counted them properly. Um, so these are all the books that I bought from October to the end of January. I did a similar haul last year from like, I think November to mid January, um, which was about 46 books. And I didn't include in that my visit to Bookfest, which happens um, in the middle of January. It's a giant book fair, um, secondhand books. There's literally like a million. It's in a giant convention hall and there's just tables and tables and tables of secondhand books. And it's the most amazing thing ever. I've sorted these into categories because there are lots and I didn't know how to sort them. So I did it by genre. So we're gonna start with science fiction and we're gonna start with the ones that I've read already because I have read some of these already. And the first book in this giant stack of YA science fiction that I have read is Illumine by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. You probably heard a lot about this. There was so much buzz about this book and this was one that I wanted to read, but then I didn't buy it. And I was like, dude, looking back, my one regret was that I didn't buy and read this book. So I read it, I think it was one of the last books I read of the year maybe. Um, I absolutely loved it. It's a science fiction set in outer space and it's told in like chat logs and like different files and stuff. And it's really, really, really cool. Even though it looks giant, it reads really quickly. I had to get the hardcover because um, just, Hello. Too precious for this world. I also picked up and read Ober Newton because it is by Isabel Carmody and Isabel Carmody came to a convention so I had this one signed. How nice. And she said my name sounded musical. That's nice. I've never heard that before but it's a lovely compliment for a name. This is set far in the future after the world has kind of had some sort of nuclear event and people have developed like uh, different abilities and stuff and those people get like set on fire and exiled and stuff. This year I made the super wise decision to start reading The Lunar Chronicles by Marissa Meyer and so I had to complete the series um, once I started it because it's amazing. It's really great. So I picked up Scarlet, Cress, Winter and the I guess novella Fairest which is set in between the third and fourth book. These books are amazing and so pretty. I particularly like the end papers of Ferris. Definitely one of my favorite series and I recommend them to everybody. So those are the sci-fi YA books that I have bought and read but I have a bunch where I still await the pleasure of reading them and I'll show them to you now. So my birthday's in September and I get um, I think five dollars credit from my local bookshop to use within about a month I think. I had a couple of dollars credit already on my rewards card and I found out they were having a massive sale on science fiction so I picked up one of the books that was on sale and that was The Knife of Never Letting Go by Patrick Ness. I think I ended up paying like five dollars for this or something so it was pretty good. Um, I don't actually know much about this. I have one other Patrick Ness novel which I haven't read so I haven't read any Patrick Ness but this trilogy comes pretty highly recommended. All I know is that it's in a world where there's I think mostly dudes and they can read each other's minds and then the main dude meets a girl and he can't read her mind or something. Yeah, clearly I know a lot about these books that I'm showing you. I heard a bit of buzz about this one before it came out, but then not much after, but I think it's because it came out during a time when I was very busy and not keeping up with booktube as much, but that is Zeros. This is by Scott Westerfield, Margot Lanigan, and Deborah Biancotti. I believe this one is about some teenagers who have either crappy superpowers, or they have superpowers, but they're kind of crappy people. I think they have superpowers that make their life a little bit difficult is what I'm getting. Um, but it sounds really interesting. I'm really into like superheroes and superpowers and stuff in books at the moment so I'm pretty excited to read this. I can't believe I haven't read it yet. I was so excited when I got it but I just have had there are too many books in the world. That's no that's not a problem. That's the opposite of a problem. <laughs> Found out recently that Maria V. Snyder is coming to a convention in April and I'm going to go and I'm going to meet her but I haven't read any of her books. Whoops, so I picked up Inside Out. All I know about this one is I think it's a dystopian. It seems to be that their society split into the haves and the have-nots. And our main character is a have-not and she wants to escape or do something, stick it to the man, have a burger. I don't really know what her goal is. I didn't really read very far into the blurb. Don't know whether to start with this or Poison Study or this random book. The Touch of Power that I forgot that I had by Marie V. Snyder. I'm a big fan of the Artemis Fowl series by Owen Colfer and I've read a couple of different things by him. Everyone who I've met who's read a lot of Owen Colfer's books, they've all asked me, have you read Airman? And then I say no and hang my head in shame and go hide in the shame corner with my shame cone 
my shame sandwich. But when I was at Bookfest, I saw this awesomely nice edition of Airman by Owen Colfer. All I know about this one is it's about a boy named Connor and I think he wants to fly and I think it's steampunk. Like it looks pretty steampunk. I clearly know a lot about this book. I'm in a book club on Facebook and it's really fun because we all have like authors that we love. Like if anyone knows, if anyone mentions Skullduggery Pleasant, you tag me because I love that series. I love Derek Landy. Um, but there's different people. Like I've read different books because people are so passionate about them in this group. And one such person is really passionate about Charlie Higson and I haven't read any Charlie Higson. So I managed to pick up The Enemy at Bookfest and this is in awesome condition. I don't even know if this has been read. All I know about this one is I believe it's about zombies and kids trying to survive this like zombie apocalypse or something. I don't know, but it sounds pretty fun. I actually haven't read that many books with zombies so I'm pretty excited to expand my zombie knowledge. Another book that I also picked up by Charlie Higson was Silverfin. I almost read this so many times in high school in my library. I remember seeing it there and I was like, ooh, I should read that. But then I didn't for the stupid reason that I thought that I'd be cheating on Alex Ryder because it's also about a young spy. This is about young James Bond. So this is about the James Bond as a kid. I'm super into the spy kids genre as I like to call it with like Alex Ryder and the Cherub series so I'm pretty excited to add this to that on my shelf. Speaking of the Cherub series, Yes, I got Divine Madness by Robert Muchmore. This is the book that I'm up to in the Cherub series. I'm really excited for this one because in it, James, the main character, gets to go to Australia, which is where I live. Moving on now to fantasy. I got really excited before Christmas because right before Christmas at Big W, which is the place to find cheap paperbacks, okay? Big W. If you're Australian and you're looking for cheap paperbacks, Big Dubs has your back. Big W put out a whole bunch of box sets and they were so amazingly priced. I picked up the Heroes of Olympus series by Rick Riordan. This is the series that follows Percy Jackson and I read old Percy Jackson and I loved it. So I was like, I need more. I need more in my life. So I picked up all five of the books. I have read The Last Hero and I really enjoyed it. I don't know if these are in the right order, but there is The Son of Neptune, The Mark of Athena, The House of Hades and The Blood of Olympus, which I'm like 98% sure is the last book. And after that, I plan on reading Magnus Chase by Rick Riordan. I picked this up and then I realized that I wanted to actually read the Heroes of Olympus series first, so that I wasn't skipping around or starting series without finishing them. So this one will have to wait. Another box set that I picked up at Big W was the Infernal Devices trilogy. Um, I've been tossing up whether or not to get this, but I read the first three books in the Mortal Instruments and everyone was like, you should read Final devices because they're better. So I believe the first one, these are out of order. These are out of order. So we have Clockwork Angel, Clockwork Prince, and Clockwork Princess. I know that these have new covers, I think, but I actually like these ones. I think I'm up to the stage in the series where Clockwork Angel is the next one that I should read because there's a specific order. I've been following the Shadowhunters TV show, thanks to Netflix, and uh, it's, um, it's interesting, let's just say that. One of the books that I bought because I got to the end of 2015 and I was like, why haven't I read this yet? So many people are raving about it, is The Raven Boys by Maggie Stiefwater. So many people just rave about this series and I read it and really enjoyed it. The main reason I hadn't started this already, I think, is because I'd heard that if Blue kisses a boy, he'll die. That's what she's been told her entire life. And I was like, oh, I don't wanna read a series about a girl trying not to kiss the boy she loves. But it's not like that at all. There's, there's like minimal, minimal, minimal romance in this series. So if you've put it off because of that, like I did, don't do it. You should read this. It's really interesting. The fantastical elements and stuff. It's really, really interesting. And I've already picked up The Dream Thieves, which is the second book in the series. I know the fourth book, Raven King, is coming out in, I'm thinking, April. So I'm hoping to read this one soon and then pick up, is it Blue Lily Lily Blue? Similarly, I had heard so much about the Grissa trilogy that I had to go and pick up Shadow and Bone by Lee Bardugo, which is the first book in the Grisha trilogy. I read it this month, so I talked about it in my January wrap up, but it is amazing. I love the world. The world that she creates is the most fantastic thing. So I want to read a hundred books set in the Grisha world. I don't even care too much what happens. I just want to see more of it. And then of course, recently Six of Crows came out. I actually bought this first. Um, this is also by Lee Bardugo. It's set in the same world, but like, I think, I don't know if it's a different time or if it's just a different place or different people or something, but it's set in the Grisha world. I want to read the original trilogy, like the Grisha trilogy before I read this, just because I think there might be some even minor spoilers. And I'm like, I'm like ridiculously obsessed with reading things in order. Even if there's not a proper order, I will find a proper order to read things in, 
right? Yes, that's how I roll. I mostly bought this because um, it looked really pretty as well. It has black lined pages um, and people were saying that this is a limited edition or something and I was like, I need that. No, I need that now. A book that I'd heard a bit about but hadn't actually seen in bookshops, I don't think, until I went to Bookfest is Serafina by Rachel Hartman. I know this is about dragons and I think it's middle grade um, and it's just been described as being a really beautiful book and I haven't read a lot about dragons and I'd like to so I picked it up also it was cheap and again it looks like it hasn't been read this looks brand new anyway it's a really pretty cover I hadn't seen this cover I'd only seen like the purple kind of maybe shiny one technically I have read this book but I've never read it like this before because that's the illustrated edition of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone by JK Rowling illustrated by Jim K I just I made a promise that if I didn't have this by the end of December like if I hadn't received it as a gift or something I would just buy it for myself because Merry Christmas to me it's just really beautiful it's got awesome illustrations and um, I'm really excited because I was almost almost going to buy like a really nice box set because my editions of Harry Potter that I read are the adult ones and they are not great quality like I only read them once and my little sister read them as well but even with just us both reading them once they are like falling apart they look atrocious I was almost going to go out and buy like a beautiful box set which I still might do but I decided that for now I'm just going to collect them in these beautiful illustrated editions I believe they're coming out once per year I don't know what they're going to do when they get to the big big like the order of the phoenix or whatever because this is the first book and look how big it is like they're just gonna be huge now onto horror books i only picked up three i don't read a whole lot of horror but i have been expanding my horror collection over the past little while all three of these i picked up at Bookfest. the first one is house by ted decker and frank peretti i remember reading this in high school and just loving it. From memory these people end up in this house and it's kind of like they've entered a game and they have to like survive in this house and there's a supernatural element I think and there's a killer and it just I remember it being really creepy so I'm hoping to reread it and that it's just as creepy as I remember. The other two I got are both short story collections by Stephen King. I love Stephen King's short stories maybe even more than his full-length novels like his short stories are just really good. He's really good at taking a crazy idea no matter how simple or complex and just pushing it to its like limits and then just bursting your brain open that's what happens so i got nightmares and dreamscapes and i also got everything's eventual both in hardback um and not too shabby condition now i always say that i don't read a lot of contemporary but then i end up reading quite a bit of contemporary especially ya or like general fiction i don't know if it's all classes contemporary but i did buy some i haven't read any of these yet i don't think and a lot of them i picked up at bookfest one that i didn't pick up at bookfest though was second chance summer by morgan matson i received this in a facebook competition i think the page was run by simon and schuster the um publishers so thanks to them i have this book um i have heard a lot of good things about morgan matson um out of all of the kind of contemporary authors that i hear about from booktube she's probably the one that i've wanted to read the most and i'm pretty keen to read it it has a pretty smashing cover by the way it looks very summery so it's summer right now maybe i'll end up reading it during summer it has summer written all over it but i'm um, because it's in the title, the word summer i also managed to pick up the last book that i needed from the georgia nicholson series it's called stop in the name of pants this isn't the last book i think it maybe is the second last or something i don't know which one it is but it was the last book that i needed i picked them all up from bookfest um over the years and uh this is just the series by louise renison about the most dramatic teenager in all the whole of the uk i also picked up holes by is it lewis or louis sacha saka i don't know how to pronounce this guy's name either of them wow i'm terrible um this i read as a kid and i've seen the movie and i just really enjoyed it and it was at bookfest and i was like yo let's relive those happy memories so i picked it up because why not another movie that i really enjoyed but hadn't read the book of is the sisterhood of the traveling pants by anne brochers brochers is that how you say it Pfft. I don't know. I remember really enjoying the movie because it's about friendship and it has romance and stuff in it but the friendship is the core thing and I thought that was really cool. So I am excited to read this book. A lot of people love this series. I haven't really heard much negative stuff about it. Um, I haven't really heard much about it at all lately but I picked it up 
pretty ready to read it. It's the movie edition too, <laughs> because I really like the movie. I managed to pick up a lot of Australian YA contemporary, which is really cool. The one that I mo got most excited about is because it's a book that's out of physical print, I believe. Like I can't find it anywhere in print and I read it as a teenager. I have the author's other book in my shelf and I've been looking for this one. I know that you can get it on ebook, but I don't have an e-reader and I wanted the physical copy and I managed to find it. And that is The Year Nick McGowan Came to Stay by Rebecca Sparrow. I really love Rebecca Sparrow. She's just got this amazing humor and her books are really light and funny but um her characters are amazing. Rebecca Sparrow is actually from my city and so is this next author. They've actually written a book together which I have on my shelves um but that is Nick Earls and I picked up three of his books. I got Making Laws for Clouds. I've never actually heard of this one so I don't know what it's about but it's set in summer I think over the summer holidays so maybe another summer read. I also got Head Game which I believe is about two friends. They meet at university and then try to pick up girls. Um, so that sounds pretty hilarious. And then I got Bachelor Kisses, which I don't know much about either. I think it's about, again, some friends trying to get through uni. But I do like Nick Earls, like a brand of like contemporary stories. They're really light and laid back. They make you think a little bit. Another Australian author that I do hear about a little bit on booktube is Melina Marchetta. I read Looking for Ella Brandy last year and I really enjoyed it. And a lot of people said that if you enjoyed that, you need to read Saving Francesca. So I found this at Bookfest and I was really excited. This is an all boys school that started accepting girls and Francesca goes to the school and I think it's just about her being new at the school and getting through school. I don't really know. And this book specifically I've heard a bit about on booktube and that's On the Jellicoe Road. I believe it was also released overseas, uh, I think in the US, as just Jellicoe Road. But having heard about this more than the others on booktube, I just know nothing about this. I think it's about a girl who was abandoned as a child and um, she's in high school and that's sort of something she has to come to terms with. I don't really know very much about it. Clearly, this seems to be a running theme in the video. I also ended up finding Paul Jennings' Round the Twist. If you've heard of Round the Twist, you'll know that it's the weirdest show ever. It's an Australian show from a while back about these people, this family that lives in a lighthouse and just weird stuff happens to them. It is so, so weird. Um, and this is, I think, the original short story that inspired the show. It seems that he's actually writing about the process of taking a story to TV, which is really interesting. Um, and some, maybe some short stories. I kind of flick through it and it seems like it's going to be really fun. So I am really curious to read this one. I also picked up a couple of memoirs at Bookfest. The first is Popular, a memoir by Maya Van Wagen. Nin? Wagonin. Um, I think this is about a girl who, I think she was like 13 or something, she was quite young and she wanted to try and see what would happen if she took a really old book about how to be popular, um, from like the 50s or something, and, um, try to follow that in real life. Um, so I'm really interested to read this. I've heard positive things. A lot of people have said that they enjoyed it, so I am excited. This also looks like it hasn't been read and I picked it up at Bookfest. And I'm pretty excited about it. I also picked up The Family Law by Benjamin Law. He's a local author as well. And he's actually spoken at my uni a bunch of times when I was at uni. Benjamin Law has his own TV show now. It's called, I think, The Family Law. I think it's called the same thing. I mean, it was literally filmed in my city in the suburb where I used to work, which is crazy. I also picked up On Writing by Stephen King, which is kind of like his memoir about his writing life, as far as I know, and everyone recommends this everyone recommends this for like if you're interested in writing um and Stephen King apparently this is a really great memoir so I was stoked to pick it up at Bookfest and last but not least I have kind of I guess a miscellaneous section of books that kind of didn't fit into any other section these first four are ones that I picked up at Bookfest and the first of those is The Air Affair by Jasper Ford. I've been interested in reading this for a long time but what really piqued my interest lately is Christy I think her channel's What's Christy Reading I could be wrong I'll put it down correct information somewhere um but she absolutely raves about Jasper Ford's books I've never read anything by him so I'm pretty excited this is a story about a girl named Thursday Next who's like an investigator and it features characters from like known pieces of literature so I think they're looking for Jane Eyre Jane Eyre's gone missing how fun does that sound a book about book characters like hello hello yes I also picked up a lineage of grace from Francine Rivers I haven't read any Francine Rivers books 
in a long time. She's written a lot of different stuff. Um, she's a Christian author and this one is about five stories of women from the Bible which is really exciting because you hear a lot of stories about dudes in the Bible but um, there are lots of women in the Bible as well whose stories are super important. That sounds really interesting. Yay women, we're cool. I wasn't really sure about this next book. I'm not 100% sure if it's something that I'd enjoy. A lot of people um, love it and that book is Male's Last Dancer by Lee Kanji. Apologies if I pronounced that wrong or accidentally said something really offensive. Um, but all I know is that that's about this boy that is kind of plucked from poverty and becomes a dancer or something. I really don't know much about this, clearly. But it does sound like a really important, beautiful story. And this is a true story as well. I don't know how I managed this, but I found a brand new edition of The Invention of Hugo Cabret by Brian Selznick at Bookfest. In all its unread glory, I have this book. I know very little about this, mostly because I was like, that book's really expensive. I'm probably never going to buy it. I know that there's heavy illustration. There's a lot of pictures that the story's told in, which is really interesting. It's a beautiful book. I'm sure that I'm gonna enjoy this because a lot of people have just raved about it. And we finish with two Star Wars books, neither of which are novels. The first is the Star Wars Annual from 2015. My dad bought this for me for Christmas. That's pretty cool. One side is Darth Vader. The other side is Yoda. Yoda man. And it's just like cool pictures and infographics and stuff about Star Wars. And I just, I want to put it like somewhere where we can all just look at it because it's really pretty. Like on a day where I'm feeling evil, Darth Vader. When I'm feeling all good and wise and stuff, Yoda. And my sister got me the Star Wars coloring in book and the designs are completely awesome. So I'm really excited to color this in yet. I haven't colored any of it in yet, but I will soon. Netflix and coloring in. That's what my life is going to consist of on my days off. So those are all the books that I have to show you today. I'm not going to try and pick them up because there are a lot. Hope you enjoyed that. Let me know in the comments below if you've read any of those books, which books I should read first, what your favorite of these books is, what's your favorite kind of sandwich. I'm going to go to bed now because it's actually quite late. Hopefully you can't tell that because my lights are doing the job. I will see you next time, but in the meantime, go and color something in. Colour in a picture, or draw a picture, or write a poem. Be creative. Unlock your creative inner self. I'm going to go to bed now. I'm really tired. That's why I'm talking like a weirdo.